Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Abard Stories. When I was growing up, there was only seven stations on the television. We did not have the internet. We did not have streaming services. We did not even have cable. We had over the air. You knew what was coming on next week by the television guide, which you either got in the mail or you picked up at the grocery store. Once in a while, you would see previews of shows that were coming onto TV. There were a few shows in that time period, and still really to this day, that if I know they're coming on, I'm going to stop, sit down, and watch them. This is one of those shows. She wore a yellow ribbon. It's a western. And, well, 1949. Good year for westerns. The premise is very simple. We have a aging Captain Nathan Brittles, United States Cavalry. He's set to retire in approximately a week. The Native Americans, the Indians, well, they've left the reservation. They're stirring up trouble. We find out very early on the reason behind that is Custer's last stand, and Custer and his men were wiped out. We also have a love triangle going. What's a good Hollywood Western without some kind of love triangle? The participants are Miss Olivia Dandridge, Fort Stark's commanding officer's niece, John Ager as Lieutenant Flint Cohill, and Harry Carey Jr. as Lieutenant Ross Pinnell. Well, the two young lieutenants are vying for Miss Olivia Dandridge's eye. She is, after all, one of the very few young women at the fort. And she is very attractive. Well, Captain Brittles, he's given a mission. Because of the Indian uprising, his commanding officer knows that it's going to be a long winter campaign. Well, Captain Brittles has been assigned to return the Indians to the reservation and also to get the women to the stagecoach line to get them back east where they will be safe. So we have the premise for the show. We have a nice little love triangle as a side story. We start out on the mission and some things happen along the way. But Captain Brittle does arrive at the coach depot where the Indians have already attacked and killed people. The stage is not going to be going back east. His mission failed not being able to return the Indians to the reservation and not being able to get the women out of harm's way, they return to the fort. There's definitely some drama along the way and he has to leave Lieutenant Cohill as a rear guard. Well, Captain Brittles, he's about to retire in one day. He wants to take the troop out one last time, but as his commanding officer rightfully so informs him, he must send Lieutenant Flint. And if Captain Brittles is going to go, are people always going to be looking for somebody else? Flint must lead the mission. Well, Flint does, and he does get to Cohill in time. And on the way back, Captain Brittles has snuck out early. He's going to lead the mission to put the Indians back on the reservation. He wishes to do so without bloodshed. He knows the old Indian chief, Pony Who Walks. And they go and have a discussion. We see that they were friends. But that they cannot stop the war. Yes, we are too old for war. But old men should stop wars. Too late! Too late! Many squaws will sing the death songs. Many lodges will be empty. You come with me. We hunt buffalo. Get drunk together. Well, as you can see, it was a success. Captain Brittles is now set to retire. Not as the failure that he was very upset about from the first mission but as being able to force the Indians back on the reservation. 
without bloodshed, might I add. He's starting to ride off into the sunset, and we see Captain Tyree. Well, Sergeant Tyree now. He was Captain Tyree of the Confederate forces. Comes up to Captain Brittles, and the army is not done with him. Captain Brittles has been recalled to duty as Chief of Scouts with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, a major advancement. His orders, well, they've been endorsed by none less than Phil Sheridan, William Tecumseh Sherman, and the President of the United States of America, Ulysses Simpson Grant. Well, when he returns to the fort, he finds out that, well, Miss Dandridge and Lieutenant Cohill are now engaged. They thought that nobody knew what was going on. Captain Brittles informs him, the only two that didn't know what was going on were them. The entire fort knew. But he must make one last report. And we see him heading out to make that report to his wife. That is a very good movie, a very fitting ending, and I hope that you all enjoy it as much as I do every time. So if you've got a little bit of time and you see this coming on, or well, nowadays I guess you can just download it anywhere, give it a try. I think you'll like it. It's a good western from the classic days of Hollywood. And it doesn't pretend to be anything more than what it is. Just pure fun. Good night, everybody.